Welcome back to another reading and correcting with me, Kindar, the Tiger Rights, and Ty, the Tiger Supervisor. These are where I read a chapter from one of my stories and correct it as I go. If you want to listen to these live, it is on Twitch every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. And if you want to support me, that is on my Patreon. Today we are doing chapter 31 of The World Which Is. All right. So to start with, for those who have been following this from the start, kind of, um, it's been pointing out, pointed out that I made a mistake. I forgot to keep track of Dennis's class, quest class. So uh, going forward, the story is behaving as if I've made those adjustments, but I'm not going back to rewrite and re-record this. So as of the start of this chapter, Dennis is level five. And he's got four ability points to assign, three attribute points, nine skill points. Um, so, yeah, that is how the story will be progressing. The city no building is impressive. White stone with a dome on top. Columns on each side of the entrance, which are doors tall enough to accommodate the giant exiting. I catch myself staring as he steps around people, then force myself to stop. He isn't like in the stories my dad told me when I was a kid, where giants could touch the clouds and were vicious monsters. He's maybe four meters tall, dressed in a well-made craftspeople's dressed in well-made class craft people's clothing. As I head for the entrance, an orc gets into an argument with a woman, and I've taken three steps in their direction when she flips him the finger and he barks laughter. Then they head away together. I need to remember that not everyone who looks inhuman is automatically dangerous or up to causing problems. This isn't court. I'm bound to come across more of them. I'm bound to come across more of them, even if, in the grand scheme of things, they are in the minority. Base, Base said that according to the information he gathered on the way to reaching court, humans, or human-looking races, make out 70%, nearly 70% of the population. He's the first to say numbers, The to say... The numbers, the number is 30 years out of date, but that for it to change significantly, it would take a system like a change again. Inside, it is loud with conversations and busy people coming and going. The room is vast and the whistle that escapes me has some people chuckling. There is nothing like this in court. The larger structure is base, and that's only true if you consider his area of influence as being the building. Otherwise, his wall doesn't qualify, and then it's just regular-sized buildings spread around within the walls. No, within the wall. Yeah, it's a circle. Even the command center isn't that all that big, and I don't think he's ever made the inside anything close to this large. He made it large enough a few years ago to have a town meeting, but it wasn't like this. How am I supposed? How, how am I? Blah, how am I supposed to find where to go? You look like you could use some help, a woman said, and I turn in her direction, only to step back with a start. A ragged ear at the top of her furred hair head tilts, and she cans her head. New to the city, I take it. I nod, dumbfoundedly. Wait, what? All right, you don't like... Yeah. She's dressed in a leather uniform close to those of the, the guards in court. It's dyed a deep blue for the chest and lighter for the arms, giving the impression she's wearing the chest over a, ch a shirt. On her shoulder is a crest, cross sword over the rendition of the tower, Toronto's crest. The name Leona is engraved on the left side of her breast, on the left side breast of her armor, instead of a sword, she has a baton at her belt and her hand resting on its pommel. I'm, I'm sorry, 
I mulled both, then straighten and force myself to look at her face, the wide muzzle that I have no problem imagining hides vicious looking teeth, the fur light the fur is light brown with the streaks of black going around her head, her ears. We don't have anyone looking like you in court, and I was attacked by a warg. It wasn't a fun experience. She nods like that wasn't the most idiotic thing I could have said. Comparing her to a warg, she doesn't even look like one being on two legs and in a uniform. I can imagine it would be a harrowing experience. What are you looking to do here? Get skills, points, or money? Both, maybe. I don't know yet. It's going to depend on if I can get everything I need with my points. I shut up at the quirking of her lips. I'd rather not see her teeth. Then you want the third floor. Room 304 to 308. The node accesses there are set to deal with both. It shouldn't be busy since most people buy their skills with cash. Do they have access to class abilities? They do, but you can't buy those with money, and you can only do that from your personal connection to the system. Yes, but I want to look at them side by side, do comparison and make sure, to make sure the build I planned is going to work. I can't do that with the system's answers. The smile stretches before I finish, but doesn't expose teeth. The nodes are general access, so you'll be able to do that. Thank you. I head to the large stairs and up to the third floor. The numbers are on brass plaques. On, bla on, on brass plaque, plaques on each side of the entries. 304 and 305 have all their nodes occupied, but 6 has half of them free. Unlike base, where I interface through a screen in the command center or in my room, or by having base just show me what I'm asking for, here, the access node is a sphere floating over a table with a chair before it. I sit and touch it, and a welcome screen appears. I open the journal on the table, taking one of the pages I added before leaving court and the stylus. Show me the list of skill relating to the wilderness. I don't have to speak. The, two, the man, two notes from me, glances in my direction in an annoyance before going back to typing and looking at the screen, at the screen only he can see. Another difference from base, the node uses my personal interface to display the information instead of having a screen anyone can read. I know how to write, but I've been I've always talked with base, so that's how com that's what's comfortable for me. The node doesn't say anything. Neither base nor Grandpa Lewis know if their relationship is unique. In their travels, they in their travels, they haven't come across any other military node, so they can't find out if they're all like that, like them. What they did say is they've never come across a settlement node that seems to be able to think. On the whole, they seem to be extensions of the system, filtered down to accomplish specific tasks, like manage a city or let people pick skills, classes, when it's time, get information, Base can do all that, but he doesn't need anyone setting the nodes up for what it will deal with. He doesn't even need Grandpa Lewis, although as a commander, Base needs to obey him when he gives an order. Or when he sets someone else to be able to give bases or base orders. System Query, Skills, Outdoors, Camouflage, Botany, Cartography, Climbing, Fishing, Hiking, Mythology, Navigation, Prospecting, Swimming, Tracking, Trapping, Zoology. Huh. Uh, da, 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 okay, I'm realizing I'm missing one. Because Cryptozoology would be an outdoor skills. All right, let's add a row. Actually... You know what? Yeah, I'm going to put it here. I am, I will move it back where it belongs, but right now that would be too much trouble, I think.
don't really want to spend the whole day. Well, okay, you guys probably don't want to watch me just move words around. Probably don't even want to watch me do that, but this is bugging me. There we go. Um, yeah, that's all. I'll give this is for my co-scripter. I write down the mythology and tracking next to the bushering skill. Cryptology, leather working, and fletching I already planned for. I had zoology. I doubt monsters are all I'll be killing while I traveled. At least I don't plan on hunting them for food if I have other options. If cryptology is that us? Cryptozoology can get me more from their corpse, then zoology should do the same with normal animals. I consider trapping, then dismiss it. That's re that requires staying in place longer than I plan to. Camouflage is... Hmm. I don't know how important that is to hunting. It feels more like something I'd want to use if I'm trying to evade someone. Hiking is tougher. At it all day it lets me travel for longer without getting tired. Does it work with hiking? Does it work with hiking or not? It should, I think, but neither explicitly say so. System, does the hiking... You know what? Let's capitalize this. System, does the hiking skill add to add it all day ability to the add it all day ability? No response. Add that to how others add that to how other striding opens up teleportation and other striding lets me access an entirely other plane of travel and hiking doesn't seem all that impressive anymore sure in that other plane i still have to walk for a cube of trains but i'd only want it for really so i'd only run it for a really long distance so maybe hiking would be of use but i add sewing if it's a good idea to be able to repair my leather armor myself, it's a better one to be able to repair my clothing. That's eight skill. I'll probably learn hiking just <clears throat> with all the walking I'll do. That leaves one point, two, if I decide to be to buy one with money. It's tempting to keep two points in reserve, but money is also good. This is harder than I expected. I'll buy them with point. Ultimately, Money is more versatile, so something I should keep as much of around as possible. So, that's eight new skills, all level one. I'm looking at a lot of practicing for them to be of any use. No point wasting... No point wasting time... Worrying... About that. Now, it's on to going over my abilities properly. And that concludes chapter 31, possibly 31 part one. Um, I haven't decided if I will make the ability section its own chapter or just merge it into that afterwards, but it will be written, written separately because I ran out of day, a time that day. Uh, yeah, if you're enjoying this, please leave a like. If you want to know when the next chapter is going to be up, subscribe, hit the bell. If you want to read the story, it is up on Royal Road for free. If you want to read ahead and support me in the process, that is on my Patreon. If you are looking to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. The links are in the notes. And with that, I shall wish you a good day.